morning we're going to or I'm going to go through some problems on pages 8 and 9 in the acid base homework um, to help you out if you need help at home. First one we start talking about electrolytes. Electrolytes are substances that will break apart into ions, positive and negatively charged particles when they're dissolved in water. Electrolytes are important um, when you're out there in that band parking lot in the summertime and you're sweating like crazy or you're at cheer practice and you're being thrown around and you're sweaty or at football practice or baseball practice or any of those where you're sweating a lot, you're losing electrolytes and they're important. They're important for your, uh, for your heart and for your organs to keep functioning correctly. Well, as you sweat those out, you need to replace them. Powerade is one of the things that um, has electrolytes dissolved in it that will help uh, replace the ones that you sweat. So in order for something to be an electrolyte, it cannot be a covalent compound. It has to be an ionic compound that can break apart into ions. Well, water, while that's a polar substance, that's usually the solute. That's what things are dissolved in. Dextrose, right there, that is a covalent compound. How do I know? Well, there's a whole bunch of nonmetals put together, and there's no hydrogen, so I know it's not a I know it's not an acid, so that can't be it. Okay, sugar, same thing, same as dextrose. Both of those are covalent compounds, so that's a no. The one that will break apart into electrolytes is the ascorbic acid. That hydrogen in the acid will come off and you'll have H plus ions floating around in there. Um, and those ions that are broken apart uh, will help carry electrical charges and replace uh, electrolytes that you need in your body. Okay, number five, during lab, you record pH values for samples Q, R, and S. There's Q, R, and S. If sample T is less basic than sample S, but more basic than sample Q, what pH range must T fall between? Well, it says that it's um, got a pH that is less than 11.5, so something this way, 11.5, but more than 8.1. So it's somewhere in the middle here. So we look at the answers, okay, between 2.2 and 8.1, nope greater than 11.5. Well, now it says right here that it's less basic than sample S. So that's 11.5. That's a no. Less than 8.1? Nope. It says that it's more basic than sample Q, which is 8.1. So my correct answer, between 8.1 and 11.5. Not hard to read that table. Um, oxidation reduction practice. Um, I teach my students, and you know what? I'm going to go ahead and fill out. I'm going to do number 11 first. This is a really great memory trick. So what do each of these letters stand for? O, oxidation. Is loss of electrons. So oxidation is loss of electrons. Rig, reduction. is gain of electrons. Okay, so why are these two things important? Because they will help us keep it straight. Redox reactions can be tough, okay? So it's an easy way for us to remember if you're losing electrons, well, that's an oxidation reaction. If you're gaining electrons, that's a reduction reaction. So we look back here at number eight and keep this in mind. In the reaction, sodium plus fluorine yields sodium fluoride. What is being oxidized? Okay, hmm, so oxidized is loss of electrons. Sodium's oxidation number as a free element has an oxidation number of zero. Fluorine is zero. In this compound, sodium has an oxidation number of plus one and fluorine has an oxidation number of negative one. Those are easily found on the periodic table. So I need to figure out which one is losing electrons. Well, sodium, if it goes from a zero to a plus one, oh, look at that. That means that we've lost electrons. That means sodium had an electron, but now it doesn't because it's positive. It lost that negative charge. So sodium is what's being oxidized. Bromine forms ions in the following reaction. Or, I'm sorry, bromine forms an ion in the following reaction. I need to read. 
bromine right here, what is it doing? Bromine plus an electron makes bromine with a negative one charge. Well, down here it says reduction is gain of electrons. Well, if bromine is gaining electron because it's being added to it, that must mean that bromine is being reduced. Okay, that, that memory trick, oil rig, is going to help you a lot. I make people, I make my students and my son write oil rig on the top right by any redox reactions that they have to practice just because it's good to have that handy so you don't forget about it. Okay, next page on the back. These are easy. You guys have done these. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at these balanced equations and determine are they synthesis reactions, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, combustion, or the new one, neutralization. Neutralization is an acid plus base and that will yield a salt oops salt which is just an ionic compound plus water that is neutralization so let's look at the two that I've highlighted here for you number 14 um, well this carbon containing compound plus oxygen yields carbon dioxide and water that is the exact format for combustion reactions. It may not look real familiar, but the pattern is always the same for these hydrocarbon combustions. So I will say that is a combustion. This one, look, let's see, what do we have? HCl, well, H is, is if it starts with an H, that's my acid. Hydroxide, there's my base, so acid plus base, hydrochloric acid plus lithium hydroxide yields lithium chloride plus water. Ah, uh, that's this one. Acid plus base yields salt plus water. So this, number 16, is a neutralization reaction. Okay, so we're going to balance one of these neutralization reactions below. Balancing works the same for neutralization. Whatever I have on the left of the arrow, I have to have on the right of the arrow. So I list out my elements. Hydrogen, chlorine, aluminum, oxygen, ooh look, more hydrogen. Okay, so let's see what we have over here. One hydrogen here plus three hydrogens here. That three gets distributed to both the hydrogen and the oxygen here. So if that's three hydrogens and that's one, that's four. Aluminum, I got one aluminum, that's easy. Chlorine, one chlorine, and how many oxygens? Yep, three. So I go over to the product side, list out my elements, aluminum, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen. I have one aluminum and three chlorines, um, one hydro, I'm sorry, two hydrogens, I can't count, two hydrogens and one oxygen. Well, when I look at this, I can tell, wow, there's a lot of things that are going to have to be balanced. So far, the aluminums are good. Okay, so I guess if the aluminums are okay, I'm going to start with my chlorines. Okay, I like to balance metals first. Then I balance anything that's not a metal, unless it's hydrogen and oxygen. I always leave hydrogen and oxygen for the end because they can be a real pain, but sometimes if you balance everything else correctly, hydrogens and oxygens will work themselves out. So let's see what we've got here. One chlorine here three chlorines here. Let me put a three right here, see if that'll work out for me. So that makes that a three. Look, that changes my hydrogen though. I have three here and I still have three here. How many is that? Three plus three is six. So I go to the other side and look at my hydrogens. Well, in order to make this number six, what would I have to multiply by? What times two is six? Right. 3 times 2 is 6. So 3 times 2 gives me 6 hydrogens. But look, uh-oh, that changed my oxygens. That could be a problem. That makes it 3. Okay, let's go and look. Looks like that balanced everything out. See, three, 6 hydrogens, 3 chlorines, 1 aluminum, 3 oxygens. 
one aluminum, three chlorines, six hydrogens, three oxygens. It's balanced. Now you can put ones in the blanks where there's nothing because if there's no number there it's assumed that it's a one but you don't have to that's completely your call so the balanced equation would have a ratio of coefficients of three one one three okay so hope you guys uh, uh, understood and I hope this helped if you need extra help please go see your teacher